After a non-stop flight from the nation's capital, President Truman is greeted by Governor Walgren as he reaches Olympia, Washington, where he was a guest at the governor's mansion during his four-day stay. Charles Ross, the president's secretary, holds an impromptu conference with the newspaper men. At the Washington State Capitol, the president performs one of the pleasant tasks of his vacation tour when he decorates Sergeant John D. Hawk of Bremerton, Washington with the Congressional Medal of Honor. It's just possible that the president's borrowed Indian sweater scared off the Puget Sound fish because the one he's holding is just posing for the picture. But his hard luck doesn't seem to dampen the fun he's having on his first vacation since taking office. And anyway, telling about the ones that got away is just as good. Well, almost. Another of the president's excursions is a trip to Mount Rainier, one of the nation's most beautiful national parks. It's a far cry from Washington's heat to six feet of snow at this 5,000-foot elevation. You can see the president is really enjoying that vacation. Continuing his welcome home tour of a grateful nation, General Eisenhower is met by his proud 83-year-old mother at Kansas City. Also on hand to greet the Supreme Allied Commander is his wife, who preceded him to the Middle West. But today, London, Paris, Washington, and other great cities play second fiddle to Abilene, Kansas. Ike's hometown, 6,000 population, honors its greatest native son. His football team and other outstanding incidents of his early days pass in review, bringing back fond memories to the boy who, having made good, receives the key to Abilene and to the hearts of his fellow citizens. <laughs> It's strictly a home folk celebration, and the five-star general of the army, who led three million American men and women to victory in Europe, enjoys his proudest moment. Our carrier task forces stab continually at Japan's heart, despite all the shrinking enemy air fleet can do to stop us. Supply ships and barges ready to load and run the gauntlet to Japan's beleaguered troops in the south are heavily strafed. Jap airports, too, come in for a pounding. Planes ready to fight, but many don't have a chance to get off the ground. Rocket shooting planes blast the enemy. Historians will long sing the praises of these carrier forces who have done so much to hasten victory over the Japs. Wounded planes try their best. And often there are planes that refuse to die. He avoids disaster to fly again. Heroism flies with every man, but death too is his constant companion. As he lands, the belly tank catches on fire with the pilot trapped in the cockpit. Miraculously living through the inferno, the pilot is helped to safety. Carefully, his gear is removed before doctors treat him. Then, action stations. Jap suicide pilots attempt to crash their planes into our ships as Navy cameramen record the battle. are driven off before they can get close to our ships and few successes are scored by the remainder. A few 
two get through, and one Jap pilot aims his plane at the carriers. Missing one ship, he heads for the Bunker Hill stern. The Bunker Hill is hit twice by the suicide-bound Japs, but she's still gallantly afloat. Fires, fed by ammunition, spread rapidly, but were fiercely fought as other crewmen rescued the wounded. As soon as possible, the cruiser Wilkes-Barre pulls alongside to turn her hoses on the flames. Many of the men were blown overboard. Others had to jump when walls of fire cut off their escape. Hours went by before the fire was controlled and sad comrades turned to counting their dead. 375 brave sailors died and many of them were buried at sea. Gallant men who gave their lives for a proud ship and a noble cause go to their honored graves. Battle weary, but with her head high, the Bunker Hill reaches the repair yards at Bremerton, Washington. Tangled wreckage scars her sleek structure, but once repaired, she'll sally forth again under Captain Sykes. One of the plane hits tore a hole completely through the ship. Pilot's briefing room was wrecked by the blasts, but this valiant lady won't be down. She accounted for 475 Jap planes in her Pacific career, and the shipping she has sunk is a heavy slap at the Jap. A salute to the Navy and her men. Yeah.